What started as a satellite campus for Indiana State University in an abandoned elementary school in 1967 has now grown to be one of the biggest universities in the state of Indiana. Their basketball program of equally meager beginnings has also grown to be a Division II national powerhouse. What began as the ISUE basketball program housed in the Plaza Park Elementary School gym today is recognized as the University of Southern Indiana, a perennial powerhouse in the Great Lakes Division past national champion, and yearly contender in Division II. In the fall of 1967, ISUE started its first basketball team. Not having enough students at the time to have a Division II program, they started independently. John Deem was announced as the first coach at the age of 23. 30 people came to try out for the team, and since ISUE did not have a place to play their home games, they made a deal with Plaza Park Grade School to play their school gymnasium. Now, once the season started, there was little practice time. They played 16 games during the 1967 season, finishing 6 and 10. After two years, in 1969, John Deem stepped down from his coaching position and the job was given to Jerry Altstadt. By now, the basketball program was more established. The team practiced every day and was more demanded. While at ISUE, Altstadt compiled a record of 30 and 59. He left after the season ended in the spring of 1974. Now the school was with no coach and still trying to build its basketball program. In the summer of 1974, ISUE found someone who they felt could build a program and help the university overall. The new coach the school hired for the fast approaching season was Wayne Boltinghouse. Boltinghouse was a former guard for the University of Evansville's 1964 National Championship team, and then he became the assistant coach under Arad McCutcheon at Evansville College. Boltinghouse was very excited to begin his first head coaching job. I've loved this area all my life, and uh, when the ISUE opportunity arose, uh, I applied for the job and uh, obviously went out there, and uh, uh, it was in the early years, and I emphasize the early years because uh, uh, it did not have much going for it athletically. During his first two seasons, he posted a total record of 17 and 34, thus making a rough start to his career at ISUE. At the start of the 1976-77 season, the university and Bolting House were hoping things would change for the better. After a major change in record in the 1976-77 season, Wayne and other players were looking forward to the next season. During the season, USI would make a statement for future teams by posting a 19-9 season record and making its first ever tourney appearance in school history. In the first tournament appearance, the Eagles would face a familiar opponent in northern Kentucky, who they had beaten earlier in the year by just one point. In their first ever game in the tournament history, they beat northern Kentucky 86-78. In the second game, the Eagles would face eastern Illinois and lose 67-79, thus ending a historic year. After the departure of Wayne Boltinghouse in 1981, the university went through a series of coaches until Bruce Pearl arrived in 1992. During this time, ISUE became USI, and four different coaches led the program. Creighton Burns spent three seasons at ISUE and compiled a 40-43 and 43 record. Mark Coombs followed for a single season, and the Eagles finished 18-11. and 11. Mark Bile went 55-31 and 31 in three seasons, and finally Lionel Sin compiled a 64-50 and 50 record in four years. Through these years, players and coaches came and went, and yet Steven Jackson was a popular standout. Jackson broke many records during his playing years from 1983 to 1987, and many of these records still stand today. He holds records for career scoring with 2,216 points scored, as well as 1,930 field goals attempted and 954 field goals made. After the 1991-92, 10-18 season, the university was looking for a coach who could get the team its first national championship. USI hired Bruce Pearl in the summer of 1992. When I was at Iowa, um, I had been with Dr. Tom Davis for 14 seasons in various capacities, and I just felt like it was about time for me to see if I could coach elsewhere and see if I could be a head coach. And I had interviewed in a number of different Division I jobs, but when the Southern Indiana job came open, um, I was very good friends with Bo Ryan. Bo Ryan was now the head coach at Wisconsin. He was at Division III wisconsin Platteville for a long time. And he told me about how good Division III basketball was and that as an assistant coach of Division I, that maybe I might look at something other than Division I to get 
started in coaching. So that combined the fact that it was from a program in the state of Indiana where I knew basketball was, was of great interest and had great passion in their fan base, that's why I decided to take a look at USI. In Pearl's first season, with a record of 22-7, and seven, he planted the seed for USI basketball to become a dominant team in the NCAA tournament each year. At the start of the 1993-94 season, the Scream Eagles held high expectations. Pearl knew they had a tough schedule that year and were one of the toughest conferences in Division II basketball. Senior center Chris Bowles, who averaged 19 points and 9 rebounds a game, was someone who was a key player for the Eagles that season. Bowles set a record at USI, scoring 45 points against Northern Kentucky, and was nationally honored as Division II Player of the Year. We inherited Chris Bowles here uh, when we came to the program, and you know he was he had special talents. Six foot ten, could shoot it uh, both inside and out, could run the floor. Just a, a, a you know it started at Western uh, Kentucky before he transferred to the University of Southern Indiana. He he. He had NBA talent. The team finished the regular season 28-4, and four, winning the GLVC Conference Tournament. It was then time for the tournament to begin. USI's first game was against a very skilled Kentucky Wesleyan team. USI guard Tyrone Tate used his speed to drive the lane throughout the game. Kentucky Wesleyan could never find a way to slow him down, and USI easily advanced to the Elite Eight. USI's first game was against South Dakota. The Eagles were down early in the game, but with Bowles' four threes right before halftime, the Eagles were up 52-42 going into the second half. USI won the game 98-77. In the final four, Tate and forward Stan Gerrard had a big game to help USI beat New Hampshire 111-89 and advance to the finals for the first time in school history. California State Bakersfield was the team USI had to play to get their first national title in the school's history. At the start of the second half, the Eagles went on a 15-6 run, led by Girard, who had 30 points in the game, and cut the lead to six. The Eagles, however, could never bounce back, and USI ended up losing the game 92-86. It was hard for the team to come so far and to fall just short of a national title. Cal Bakersfield in the championship. Bakersfield was by far the most talented team that we played, and the, the one thing they had, they had two things going for them that were different than anybody else that could see. They had a guy that could guard Tyrone and keep him out of the lane. They were awfully good defensively. They were very physical on the inside. Um, and losing to Bakersfield in the championship game was one of the toughest losses of my career. Uh, I'll never forget, I'll never forget Neil Coyle talking to God after the game. And I'll never forget my son, um, Stephen, who wound up playing for me, listening to Neil talk to God. And it wasn't about just losing, it was just a way of honoring God and, and knowing that He was very present in all of our lives. And um, that, that, that message that Neil delivered, that connection of talking to our Father, and the fact that my young son was there able to listen to that, was something that uh, has stayed with me for a long time. After the 1994 National Championship defeat, the Eagles were more focused than ever. USI started the season winning their first four games and won the Kenny Kent shootout for the second year in a row. The Eagles were then ranked number one in the nation. It would be short-lived, however. In the next game, USI lost to SIU Edwardsville, giving up 124 points. It was the worst defensive game in the school's history. With two straight losses, the Eagles dropped out of the top 20. People were starting to doubt USI, the depth of the team, and if they were still a tournament threat. USI's reaction to all of this was incredible. The team then went on a 14-game winning streak, beating their rival Kentucky Wesleyan 117-83, making their way back to the national spotlight. Returning forward Stan Gerrard was starting to turn some heads, averaging close to 20 points a game and also 8 rebounds a game. Gerrard was also in the running for Division II Player of the Year. The Eagles' streak ended, though, when they had to travel to a Kentucky Wesleyan and lost in a close game, 97-90. USI finished the season 29-4 and was ready for the tournament to begin. But it would not be an easy ride for the Eagles, however. In the first game in the tournament, USI had to play Kentucky Wesleyan. The Eagles won the game 106-67, but it was never even close. Stan Gerrard had another 20-point game, and the next game would not be as easy as the game before. 
They would have to play Northern Kentucky, a team that USI had lost to both times they played them in the 1995 season. USI knew that Northern Kentucky would be a tough opponent, but they ended up edging them in this game with an eight-point victory to advance them to the Elite Eight, where they would end up facing New Hampshire and Louisville, Kentucky, a team they had faced in the Final Four the year before. At the end of the game, the Eagles beat New Hampshire once again with a 108-93 victory that would send them to the Final Four for the second year in a row. There, they would be matched with Norfolk State. Norfolk State was not a familiar opponent to the Eagles. The Eagles were down most of the game until Stan Girard went lights out in the second half. The Eagles won the game 89-81, thus putting them in a familiar place and sending them to the national championship to face difficult opponent in California Riverside. The game was nationally televised on CBS Sports Network. The Eagles were a huge underdog, and it looked that way to begin the game when Cal Riverside went on a 17-1 run to begin the game. USI didn't seem like they were focused and ready to start the game, and before they knew it, they were down 22 points, with 11 minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. Well, we're down 30-8 to eight at one point. 30-8. to eight. And we're on CBS. And at that point now, I'm starting to talk to God again. I'm going, what have I done to piss you off so badly that you've got to be putting me on national TV and have us down 30 to 8? No one could believe that a team who had put up to close 100 points a game only put up 21 points in the first half. We were getting good shots. We just could not get anything to fall. And Riverside couldn't play any better than what they had played. And I just came in and gave the players confidence that we should be in a lot worse shape than we are. And we're just 20 minutes, 20 minutes away from winning the national championship. You know, a lot of times I think during the course of the game, you're not even completely aware that you're that far down. You know, you're a little bit in the moment. Um, and we were probably, uh, uh, you know, riding the wins that we got that year a little too high. Um, the game before we beat, uh, I believe it was Norfolk State, uh, who was, you know, probably one of the top teams in the country. And so we had a little bit of letdown in that first half. Um, it, the halftime was uh, was down. I mean, we weren't sure. We were, we were like, man, this, you know, here we are on national TV, you know, making a fool of ourselves. I mean, we were missing layups, you know, point blank shots. And and I think as a group, though, I mean, the 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 attitude was we still got another half. Mark Hostetler started the comeback, scoring eight points in the first five minutes, cutting the lead down to ten points. The Eagles had something to prove, and they came back with 2 minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. The Eagles tied the game up at 62 and then took the lead when Cortez Barnes hit a jumper to give the Eagles a 64-62 lead. When that happened, it was all USI going on a 9-1 run. They won the game to give the school its first national championship in any sport in the school's history. We didn't panic. Uh, adversity does not build character. Adversity reveals character. And our character was revealed. We did not panic. In only three seasons, Pearl led the Screaming Eagles to two national championship games and one championship. With the 94-95 national championship win, Pearl was named Coach of the Year, and Stan Gerard was named First Team All-American and Player of the Year. From the first years when John Deem had 10 players in the first team, and then Boltinghouse took them to the school's first NCAA tournament, and finally, when Pearl got the school to its first ever national championship, the school's basketball program has come a long way. John Deem and Wayne Boltinghouse are credited for starting the program over 40 years ago and then getting other coaches to carry on the tradition that ultimately led them to national championship. USI continues to grow and have strong seasons with their players, their coaches, and fans who will be able to keep that tradition going strong.